Hi everybody, welcome to the lecture on parts and instruments. I'm in section four here called parts and instruments. And I'm gonna go through the various resources and talk a little bit about the assignment that I want you to complete. First thing I'm gonna do is go over here to Quizlet and introduce you to some of the terms. Okay, the first concept I want to introduce you to is the idea of a part or track. The music we listen to is comprised of several different instruments playing at once, usually in different ranges from low to high. We can do this because we developed a system of harmony in Western Europe in the last few hundred years that allows us to align instruments playing different notes at the same time. That's not an easy thing to do, and it didn't develop many other areas in the world. It's just fairly unique to Western Europe, United States, and now it's really expanded to the rest of the world. The idea is that you have some instruments playing in high ranges, some instruments playing in middle ranges, and some instruments playing in low ranges, all at the same time. I'm calling those ranges parts, okay? Another term I might be using today is track. And there are three main parts that we listen to in our music. There's usually some sort of lead instrument or part, usually some sort of accompaniment instrument or part, and there's usually some sort of bass part. In rock and roll, when we listen to these, the lead part is usually the lead singer or the lead guitar. The accompaniment part is usually a guitar. It can be an acoustic guitar, it could be a clean guitar, it could be a distorted guitar. And the bass part is almost always the bass guitar. In addition, in the music we listen to, we brought in the idea of a rhythmic part under these tonal instruments. So these instruments all have a pitch and a pitch is something we can sing. Even if it's a low or high for us, we can sing the pitch, whereas a rhythmic part is made up of percussive sounds that are short in duration and we can't actually sing them. We would just make the sounds like mm, tsh, or uh. Interestingly, in the music we listen to, most of the pitched instruments and how they're put together come from Europe, and many of the rhythmic ideas that we listen to come from Africa. The bringing together of European and African musical influences is really what's shaped American music for the last hundred years, and it's given birth to the genres we call jazz, rock and roll, hip hop, and even country. I wanted to give you a quick example of what this looks like. So I, I have Logic here, and this is uh, some uh, music composition software, and you'll see that I've created four tracks. Right now there's nothing in these tracks. I'm going to fill them. So I'm going to start with the bottom. I'm going to create a rhythm part, and then I'm going to add a bass part to it, an accompaniment part, and a lead part. To do that, I can go over to these loops that are already created, and if you like this sort of thing, feel free to talk to me because this is the other stuff I teach, how to compose music with uh, electronic music software. The first thing I'm going to do is find a drum set. Here's one right here, and I'm going to drag this over to my track, and then I'm going to have it loop and repeat. So now if I play my song, I have the rhythm part playing, and in that rhythm part is a drum set. I would like you to be able to distinguish between the part and the instrument. So the part we're calling rhythm part. The instrument in this case is a drum set. We could put some cowbell in there. That would be a different instrument. If I hit play. This is not a complete song for us. We are used to hearing all four parts. So I'm going to add a second part here. And I can uh, have the drums playing and I hear the bass at the same time. And I can drag that bass in and also loop it. Now I have two parts playing in my song, drums and bass. We've heard this a lot. Those song sections we were talking about two weeks ago when we were talking about song form, verse, chorus, bridge, a lot of those sections are distinguished by which parts are being played. Many times we'll leave out a part in a verse and then bring it in the chorus so the song sounds bigger. I'm going to show you some examples of that here in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got my drums and my bass. Now I'm going to add a guitar, or an accompaniment guitar part to this track. It will go in the accompaniment track, and the guitar is the dominant instrument used in accompaniment for rock and roll. So I've got my drums and bass playing, and I can come over and click on different guitar sounds. There's lots of different ones in the software. I like that one. So when I find one I like, I can drag it over. Now I'm going to have rhythm, bass, and accompaniment all playing at once. Here we go. I can take out the rhythm part, and I just hear the bass and the guitar. I can take out the bass, 
And there's just the accompaniment part. I can have just the bass playing. I can add the drums. And I can finally add accompaniment. When we listen to that, we think it's a great groove. However, it is not a complete song yet. Our ears are trained to hear some sort of lead instrument, and the lead instrument is usually in the highest range. In rock and roll, it requires the singer to sing up above this accompaniment guitar because the accompaniment takes up so much room. That's why we hear in rock and roll a lot of screaming and singing in very high ranges, both male and female. The other lead sound we have is the lead guitar, and I don't have a lead singer here, but I can find a lead guitar in this track, so let me go ahead and look that up. And there's some stadium solo guitars here, so I'm going to add those to our track. I'm gonna make this go a little bit longer here. And there's different ones, I got it twisted. There's one. So I can take that lead guitar now and put it up above in the lead part. So now I've got a lead, accompaniment, bass, and rhythm all happening here. This shouldn't be too strange for you because you're very used to hearing it. This happens all the time in songs. They introduce one part, another part, a third part, and then the song really kicks in when all four parts are going, often in the chorus. Let me just play this from the beginning again so you can hear the introduction of the different parts. It's going to introduce the rhythm, the bass, accompaniment, and finally the lead. Here we go. And that's it. That's how our music is put together. Uh, pop, rock, hip hop, and jazz all use that idea of having these three parts, the lead, the accompaniment, bass, and rhythm parts. Now, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the idea in Western Europe of having multiple voices in different ranges performing simultaneously. We call that harmony, the idea that these voices align with each other nicely. And it actually mathematically aligns. The frequencies are either one, double, or triple the frequency of the lower voice. The idea of lead, accompaniment, and bass come from the traditional voice sounds that we used in Western music called soprano, alto, tenor, and voice. Soprano and alto are the female voices and tenor and bass are the male voices. Soprano being a high female voice, alto being a low female voice, tenor being high male, and bass being low male. That looked like this back in the day. I'm gonna play a song for you just for a couple seconds here that shows those four voices, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. There they are. And so we're gonna to listen to them sing. See if you can hear the high voice. It's usually the easiest to hear. Uh, here you might be able to hear the tenor voice. I'll point this part out when we get to that part of the song. And then also you'll hear the low bass down there. The alto is very hard to hear because it's in between. Okay, here we go from the top. So that's the traditional sound of soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and that is the foundation for most of our music right there. This was the sound used in the church for hundreds of years. And if we look at this music here, we see all the voices moving kind of at the same time. All the voices sing the same number of notes pretty much. We heard a couple of times that the tenor voice sang additional notes, but for the most part, when one voice moves, all the other voices are moving. 
The idea of having the soprano, alto, and tenor voice then carried over into instrumental music as well. Some of the oldest music that we still traditionally listen to is from the Baroque period, and the Baroque period has the idea of these multiple voices going at once. Let's listen to a little bit of a fugue by Bach and see if you can see and hear the voices. The voices are going to be these different colors right here. You'll see them moving through. You'll probably recognize this song too. Here it comes. So this is the first voice. We would probably call this the soprano voice. And there's the second voice. We would probably call that the alto voice. In rock and roll, this would be the lead voice, and this would be the accompanying guitar. Then he'll bring in the third voice. We would probably call this an accompaniment voice too, so in this case he's got two accompaniment voices coming, then he'll bring in the bass here. So that's how the idea of soprano, alto, and tenor voices transitioned over to instrumental music. If you come back to the course homepage and go into this content parts link here, I've created a little table that shows the instruments for each family. What is a family? A family is a group of instruments that is created similarly and sounds the same. We call this homophonic, meaning similar sounds. If we talk about the human voice, we have soprano, alto, tenor, and bass voices. The soprano is the high, the alto is the mid-high, tenor, mid-low, bass is low. Well, we have the same thing happening then in the string family. We mimicked that in the strings. So we have violin as the soprano voice, we have viola as the alto voice, cello as the tenor voice, double bass as the bass voice. We did the same thing with brass, woodwind, even fretted and percussion instruments. In brass, trumpet is the soprano, French horn is the alto, trombone is the tenor, tuba is the bass, and you can see these same instruments over here to the right are the soprano, alto, tenor, bass voices of those families. I would like you to know that. I want to show you real quickly what happened to the idea of these voices as we entered the classical period of music, and that was right around 1800. It was after the Baroque period, so after that Bach piece we just listened to. The idea of classical is that there's very clear structure, and in the classical music period we started to develop that idea of having song sections and song parts. And the parts here uh, begin to have hierarchy to them. We begin to say, you know what, the lead part is the most important. The bass is a counterpoint to it, and the accompaniment part supports that lead part. So all the voices aren't moving at the same time and singing just the same number of notes or playing just the same number of notes. If you look at this piece right here by Mozart, you can see that lead instrument over the top here, and you can see the accompaniment instruments in the middle kind of staying in the same place, and then the bass being down below, just holding one note here while the lead part moves around. These are the different voices. Let me just play that little section for you here. So that piano was moving up and down while the strings were just holding the same note over and over in the bass, you could barely even hear it down below. That eventually leads us to rock and roll, believe it or not, because we have that idea of this bass instrument being down below and the guitar holding the notes in between while the singer sings over the top. All we're missing are the drums and we're going to import those from Africa. We're going to end up with, like I said earlier, jazz, rock and roll, country, and hip hop, the main dominant genres of the last century.